The first question is, uh, where are you from? Uh, I'm originally from Chicago. I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago, and uh, now I live in Brooklyn, New York. I've lived here for the last five years. So why did you come here? Uh, I moved to New York for school. I went to NYU and to you know, get into the magic scene of New York. There's so many great magicians living in New York, and I kind of wanted to be a part of that. Oh, so that's why you work here? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, why magic? Or what I, made you interested in magic? I got interested in magic when I was 10 years old. I happened to see a close-up magician. I'd never seen close-up magic before. Uh, and the magician I saw was a guy from Chicago named Joe Diamond. And he became a good friend. And at the time, I begged him to give me lessons. And uh, so he's the first kind of magician I started learning from. He showed me some of the magic shops around Chicago and got me really interested. And when I was taking lessons, as soon as I got started, you just couldn't stop me. How long have you been doing magic tricks? Doing magic tricks? Yeah. Uh, well, as I said, I got interested in magic when I was 10 years old. I'm 23 now, so it's been about 13 years that I've been interested long. in magic. Yeah. It's pretty difficult to keep doing one thing and... You know, yeah, but like, I think about, I think a lot about musicians who dedicate their entire life to music, they're only friends with musicians, they dedicate their life to the art, and a lot of magicians I meet are the same way, where there's so many great magicians, and there's so many different types of magic, where if I ever get bored of card magic, then I move on and I learn about coin magic, and I go to study mentalism, and I go to study uh, stage magic. There's so many different types of magic that it's uh, really easy to keep yourself occupied and spend a lot of time and then not even realize how much time you've been spending studying. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, how long does it take to master a trick? Uh, so every trick is different. There are tricks that as soon as you know the secret, you can instantly do and take no practice. And there are tricks that take years to uh, practice before you are confident enough to perform it. So there's, there have been some tricks that uh, now that I have a lot of, you know, the basic skills built up, mm -hmm. there are some tricks that when I learn them, I can just do because I already know the moves I need to do. And then there are some tricks that take a while, not just because I have to practice them, but because I have to figure out how to make the handling fit me. So, for instance, there's a, there's a trick that I've been working on for the past three years that I have not shown anyone yet called the slow motion aces and the the point that i'm stuck on is there's a way that you have to count the cards in the trick that doesn't really fit the way that i count cards in all my other tricks uh so i've been trying to figure out different ways and i've maybe had like 10 different solutions that uh, can make it fit more towards me, and I'm constantly trying to figure out which one is best. And then once I figure out which one is best, then I need to practice it and make it second nature and all of that. So th there's no answer of what is the average amount of time, mm -hmm. yeah. but I can say even if I can do something instantly, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it for an audience without practicing it for about a month first, just to know that anything that can go wrong, when I've been practicing, it has gone wrong, and I have a way. Yeah, you know, a lot of the mistakes that people make nowadays is they'll see a magic trick on TV or on YouTube, and they'll go, I want to learn that trick. And then they'll find out how it's done and try and do it. When, if you were learning piano, if you heard a, if you heard a piece by, I don't know, Franz Liszt or something, you wouldn't, you wouldn't go. I want to learn piano. I'm going to start with that, where it might be a piece that you know doesn't make sense to try learning until you've been playing piano for 10 or 20 years, people make the same mistake in magic where I think it's better to start with magic that's meant to be done for uh, if you haven't done magic before. So I think, uh, yeah, if you take a more pedagogical approach and try and build up the basics, then things become easier. Um, what role does magic play in your life? Um, I mean, magic is uh, 
Magic is a big part of my life because I work here at Tannins uh, four days a week, and then I go home, and then I practice magic where I read magic books. Um, yeah, I've pretty much dedicated my life to this art. Have you ever regret of choosing this to be your major thing in your life? No, I mean, when I went to college, like you can't go to college for magic. So I went to college for music, and I studied music really hard. And yeah, I went to NYU, and I got a degree in jazz trombone. But as I was earning my degree, I was practicing magic more and more and more, and I realized that magic would be. Look, I realized that if I chose music, I might regret it. But if I chose magic, I wouldn't regret it. Um, what matters to you most? It can be anything. It doesn't need to be magic. What matters to me most? Yeah, it can be anything. About anything? Ooh, that's a tough question. Um, that's the best one. What's this box? This was like what three fifty. This one's the the haunted box. I also have. Yeah, I mean, this is the last probably either. You know, I'm very passionate about magic. I'm also very passionate about politics and. Uh, yeah, in the environment and things like that, but it's probably magic. Yeah, I see. Oh, my girlfriend, that's what I should say.